In this video, we'll be covering the simple WHERE clause. We'll be using the North Winds database, so I execute use North Wind to see that I'm in the North Wind database. And just as a reminder, I have a simple SELECT statement with no WHERE clause, and I'm producing data here, but the reminder is that a SELECT, clause, a select statement always returns a table. So in this case, I'm returning a one-row, two-column table. And a good way to think about the SELECT statement is that it describes the table you'd like to see. So within a SELECT statement, um, the SELECT portion of it uh, defines which columns. So in this case, I'm going to draw some data from the products table, but the uh, star or asterisk there means something pr pretty specific. It means all columns. So in effect, what the SELECT statement is asking is, show me a table that includes all columns from the products table. Now, if I don't want all columns, I can specify each column individually. In this case, here's the product ID. And in this case, I can affect the ordering of the columns by listing them in the order I'd like to see them in the results. So in this case, I'm putting product name first, and that's not the same order as is in the table. So when we're running this, we're seeing all rows from the table. But uh, a common misconception is that the asterisk means, show me everything. Well, the asterisk actually means, show me all columns. And we just happen to be seeing every row because we haven't asked, we haven't specified which rows yet. So if I'd like to now specify the ordering of the rows, so whether or not chai is at the top or aniseed syrup is at the top, I can specify the order by clause. And in this case, Notice that I'm specifying order by product ID, and by default, that will order them ascending. So the smallest or product ID is at the top. If I scroll down, the largest product ID is at the bottom. And I can be more explicit and say, um, order these ascending. Uh, this is unnecessary. It's uh, by default, it is assessed. Uh, ascending, but that's being more explicit. Or I could say that I want to order by some field, but do it in descending order. So in this case, the most expensive product is at the top, and the least expensive product is at the bottom. So at this point, um, we can control certain things about the table that we've specified. We can say which columns would we like to see, and that's in the select clause of the statement. We can specify the order of the columns, and you specify that also in the select clause. You can specify the source of the data in the from clause, and we can specify the order of the rows, but we haven't yet specified which rows we'd like to see. So here I'm using the WHERE clause. So the WHERE clause is for saying which rows would you like to see. And in this case, I'm saying show me the rows that have a unit price value less than 8. So the database engine is going record by record and looking at each value and evaluating whether or not that is less than 8 or not. If it is less than 8, it keeps the record. If it's not less than 8, it gets filtered out. So here's the general form of a more complex select statement. Select from, where, and order by. Uh, they do have to be in this order. And I want to point out that some of these uh, portions take lists rather than just simple or just expressions. So in the select clause, we have uh, an a list of expressions that define the columns. The from specifies an expression that tells you where the data is being drawn from. 
The order by is also an ex a list of expressions that specify the, how to order the rows. And then where is a logical expression? So there typically aren't commas in the where clause. There is an expression that gets evaluated. So here's what I mean by this. I have the select clause. Notice that this piece is an expression, and then I have a comma, and I have the next expression. So this select clause has two expressions in it. This order by clause has two expressions in it, separated by commas. So the first one is very simple. The second one is a square root of a number. So let's go back to our WHERE clause. And um, it's a logical expression. So that is, for every record, that will either be true, the statement will either be true, or it will be false. So just to show you, and uh, don't get scared by the convert statement or the complexity here, I'm just trying to show you that for each of these unit prices, I can display whether or not they're less than $8. So you can see that unit prices greater than 8 get a 0. Um, which would mean false, and prices less than 8 get a 1, which would mean true. They are less than, than 8. So now, now that I've done that, I can add the WHERE clause and limit to only the ones that are less than 8. And as you notice there, I have 11 records, and I'm showing the cheap products. Right. So what are the ways can I do a WHERE clause? So in this case, I'm finding uh, expensive products, products that are over $10. And the types of operators you can use are shown there. I can use a greater than or a greater than equal. I can have a less than or a less than or equal. I could have equal. And the not equal to operator you have a choice. You can either use two angle brackets pointing away from each other or the exclamation point equal. So just for some examples of what you can do, here I'm finding all the products in the product table where the name is equal to chai. And there's only one of them. Here I'm finding everything where the name is greater than chai. So the name comes after chai in the alphabet. So just pointing out that you can use some of these comparison operators on strings or numbers. So here is all of the products that don't have the name chai. Here are all the products that have been discontinued. Uh, I also want to point out that you can use embedded expressions inside of the WHERE clause. So here I'm doing a mathematical expression and then taking the result and comparing it to 5 to produce a logical expression. Alright, now for logical expressions you have the option of using not, and, and or. This works similar to a spreadsheet. Um, these operators, if you have uh, taken a formal logic course, these are classic uh, logical operators. So if I have discontinued items and I'd like to see the ones that are not discontinued I can put a not in front of the discontinued so in effect this is similar to having parentheses here evaluating whether discontinued is equal to one which might be true or false and then taking the opposite of it so in this case, I get all the zeros back. You can also take two logical expressions and combine them with AND or OR. So in this case, I'm finding items that are not discontinued and greater than 5 in price. Here I'm doing the same one, and just to point this out, here's the AND clause, and notice I got 77 records back. Here is, are the same conditions with the OR clause, and I get 90 record, records back. 
Now you can also control the order of the logical operations using parentheses. So in this case I say not discontinued equals zero and unit price greater than five, which will be evaluated as if there are parentheses in these locations. Uh, it gets evaluated left to right if you don't supply parentheses. So the not would evaluate here and then the whole expression. But that can be very different than this where I'm performing the and before I perform the not. So that's simple where clauses.